in the last lecture we created a dto class which we want to use for validating a request body now in order to use a dto class for validating a request body we need to connect that dto class to the route method which is going to handle that request for example we want to use this create user dto class to validate the request body which we are going to receive from a post request for creating a new user so as you can see when we are making a post request to this user resource with that request we are also passing an object and using this object we want to create a new user so we want to create a new user with this id with this name this age gender and this is married property so this data which we are going to receive in the request body before using that data to create a user first we want to validate the properties of this object and we want to check if it contains a valid value or not and for that we have created this create user dto now in order to use this create user dto to validate the request body we need to attach this create user dto to this create user method because this create user method is responsible for handling a post request which is going to come here to create a new user so you can see for this create user method what we are doing is we are reading the request body using this at body decorator and we are assigning that body to this user parameter so when we will make this request when i'll send this request in the request body we are passing this object so this object will be read by this body decorator and that object will be assigned to this user parameter okay now what we want is when this body decorator when it has assigned that object to this user parameter before that we want to validate that user object now how can we do that for that we need to connect this create user dto to this create user method okay so the intention of connecting the create user dto to this create user method is to validate the user object which we are going to receive in the request body using this create user dto now one thing you need to make sure that the object which we are going to pass in the request body so in this case we are passing this object in the request body the structure of that object must match the structure of the object of the dto class here we have this create user dto class when an object will be created for this create user dto class there we will have the id property name property gender property email and is married property so the object which we are going to receive in the request body the structure of that object must match the structure of the object which will be created from this create user dto that means it should also have this id name gender email and is married property that object might not have this gender property because it is optional but other mandatory properties it should have all right now in order for validation to work the first thing which we need to do is we need to install the class transformer package so if i go to the browser in the npm let's search for class transformer package okay so this package we need because the class validator package we use it for using the validator decorator on the dto class properties on the other hand the class transformer package is required because the class transformer package will transform that dto class into the final instance of that class that we need so this class transformer package will be responsible for creating an instance of this create user dto class which we actually need for validating the request body so the class validator and class transformer package go hand in hand and that's the reason we also need to install the class transformer package as well so for that if you see the current version of this class transformer is 0.5.1 and this version is compatible with the class validator version 0.14.1 so let's go to vs code built in terminal let me open vs code built in terminal let's close this powershell window i'm going to keep this command prompt window and there what we are going to do is we are going to type this npm install command and what do we want to install we want to install the class transformer package 
and which version do we want to install we want to install this 0.5.1 version because this version goes hand in hand with 0.14.1 version of class validator so anyway that is the latest version so if i go ahead and if i try to install it it is going to install this 0.5.1 version only but if in your case if you're watching this lecture in the future and here you see a new version some latest version in that case you can also explicitly specify the version which you want to install by using this at symbol and then specifying the version to 0.5.1 let's press enter and let's wait for this installation to complete and you can see that the class transformer package has also been installed and it has been listed in the dependencies of this package.json file so this is the first step now the second step is to connect this DTO to this action method to this create user method and to do that the first thing which we need to do is we need to use validation pipe so in the last lecture we use this built-in percent pipe default value pipe now we also want to use a built-in validation pipe okay and in order to use this validation pipe we also need to import it from nestjs slash common now in order to use this validation pipe first of all what we need to do is to this body decorator we are going to pass the validation pipe like this now in order to use this validation pipe we also need to use new keyword in front of it so we have learned that there are nine built-in pipes in nest.js out of those nine built-in pipes when we use this validation pipe and when we use this default pipe in order to use it in front of that we need to use this new keyword and that's what we are doing here now when we are using this validation pipe we also need to specify here which dto do we want to use for the validation now how are we going to specify that for that we know that this body decorator it is going to assign the request body to this user and it is going to have a type so in this case this user is going to be assigned with a user object and we want to validate that user object using our create user dto so here we can specify the type of this user as create user dto and in order to use this create user dto we also need to import it from this file path and now nest.js knows that whatever request body we are going to receive here for this parameter we need to validate that user object using this create user dto okay and for now i'm going to comment this line we are not going to call the create user method of this user service and from here also let's return a response saying that a new user has been created a simple response from here and this should be it if i save the changes now and let's go to postman and from there let's make a post request to this url and there in the request body we are going to specify an object in that object we have this id we have this name instead of age there we should have an email property and to that email for now let me assign an invalid value 26 okay then i'm specifying gender and is married now let's make a request from here so in this object there are two validation errors first of all name is empty string here so it should give us a validation error let me send this request and let's see if that happens and now you'll see that we have this error name should have a minimum of three characters because on the name we have set min length as three and it is also returning us this custom error message in the same way if we go back it says name should not be empty because we have also used this is not empty validator on that so here we are receiving the built-in error message and then we also have this email must be an email because here you see email value is also not a valid email so on that email we have used this is email validator and that is returning us this response okay so let me go and let me specify a valid name here okay let's also specify a valid email and this should be a string value okay and if i don't specify this gender property since gender is an optional property 
if we send the request the user should still be created as you can see the user has been created we are receiving this response a new user has been created but if we specify the gender in that case also this request should be sent and a new user should be created okay so we don't have any validation error message so in this way before creating a resource we can validate the data by creating a DTO like this and inside this DTO we are using some validators on the properties and if that DTO does not return us any validation error then only we will use that data for creating a new resource on the server and this is the use of a DTO so with this simple example now I think you have a pretty good understanding of what is a DTO and what do we use a DTO for and how to connect a DTO to an action method. So this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions from this lecture, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.